rising star for this week is a young man from the Tigers, Hugo Ralph Smith. Of course, his dad, Sean Ralph Smith, played some footy with both the Hawks and the Saints in the late 80s, early 90s. Hugo starting to establish himself as a running defender midfielder in this Richmond side. He's played 11 games uh, so far this year, and he's been good enough to join us after getting the nomination for round 17. Now, uh, Hugo, thanks for your time and well done. G'day, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. So 20 disposals, career high, 85% efficiency against the Suns, five score involvement, six inside 50s, and uh, just a lazy 430 metres gained. Is that, do you think, your best performance at uh, senior level so far? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's probably up there. I, um, I, think they, I think they missed one in, in Sydney when they kicked a couple of goals. I think <laughs> the goals are, are better. But, no, it's, um, yeah, I was, I was pretty wrapped, obviously, um, Wish we got the win, but um, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. How comfortable are you feeling out there now? You had, you know, taste last year, you know, basically almost cementing. Well, you might not feel you've cemented your place in the side, but from the outside, it looks like you, you, you're pretty close to doing that. Are you feeling a lot more comfortable out there now? Yeah, definitely. I think the last couple of years have been a bit interrupted with with COVID and then some little hubs last year as well. I think this year with a bit more consistency, I'm, I'm finding my feet a bit more, and uh, yeah, definitely growing as a player. So having some you know, smart heads down there helping me out is, is really good. I'm, I'm definitely finding my feet. How tough was that? You mentioned COVID there. So you pick 46 in the 2019 draft. You're coming in. Life is normal. You're coming into this great premiership winning club. You think you, you know, you're hoping to get a senior game as quick as possible, but you want to learn your craft down at VFL level. And then COVID hits. There's no footy at all. The VFL stop start. You're playing in, you know, sort of organised practice matches for for the remainder of 2020 up on the Gold Coast. How do you sort of look back on that first year and did it set you back in terms of your development or did you learn a lot about yourself? How do you sort of look back on that first year? Yeah, it was it was a bit strange, wasn't it? I think um, I think it probably hindered me and helped me in, in different ways. I think it definitely helped me. Um, we were staying at a place with the gym, so I was in the gym every night um, just after hours and stuff like that just because I was a skinny little bloke, so I needed to put some size on. Um, and definitely it helped with, uh, with you know, the, the culture and connection that we have with players. I was living with them, so definitely helped. But obviously with the with the VFL, there's no VFL. We're playing nine on nine scratch matches some weeks against uh, three combined teams. So it was definitely a bit strange. Um, but yeah, it was um, it was a good experience, and I, and I hope I never have to do it again. How much weight have you put on since you've joined the Tigers? Um, I think. I think I came in at 73 kegs and now I'm up to 83. So I think 10 or so. I'm not, not too sure actually though. Yeah, you put on a bit of muscle. Is, it, you like to get, is there sort of an ideal number you'd like to get to or are you pretty comfortable where you're at right now? I think I'm reasonably comfortable at the moment. Um, I don't want to put on too much weight and then not be able to run to save my life. But, um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm I'm comfortable where it is now, maybe a couple more over the next couple of years, but we'll see. The hair had had a couple of kilos, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Definitely cut that off and I'm back down to 73. So well, <laughs> that's what's that's helping me. Any any long-term or short-term plans with the hair or you're, you're pretty happy with how it's rolling at the moment? You know, the, the boys have uh, given me a few ultimatums, I think. Um, when it started, it was it was like get a game and I shave it off, and then that didn't happen, obviously. Um, and then now it's uh, end of year, maybe coming off, but I, I'm not too sure. It's it's really up in the air. I quite enjoy it, so I might it might stick around. <laughs> well, that's the main thing. We're speaking to Rising Star nomination for round 17, the Tigers, Hugo Ralph Smith. When you were drafted, I remember reading a couple of articles where you were likened to an Isaac Smith type of player. Is is he sort of been a a play you've looked at, and and when it settles all settles down, where do you think your your ideal role in this team will be? Yeah, I think um, yeah. Growing up, well, I was a Hawks fan growing up, so I think following Isaac Smith was unreal. Um, but more recently, I'm becoming more of a half back, so I think um, I've been following the likes of Daniel Riel. He's he's floated down there um, this year and playing some really good footy. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a couple of different blokes. Ed Richards, who's playing some really good footy this year. I'm just trying to. Learn, learn a bit of those bikes, I reckon. What about the weekend, Hugo? For a long elements of that game, it was it was good footy, good result. You look like you're going to get the win. Have you had the review yet? I mean, Kane Corns was speaking yesterday saying when you have a loss like that, when you sort of give it away in the last five, six minutes, players sort of fear that review during the week. Have you had it yet? And if so, what were sort of the main things that were pointed out? 
Yeah, we, we've had a review um, yesterday and there was definitely some tough conversations to have, but I think the tough conversations are the, the best ones that we'll have because we, we learn a lot about ourselves and we definitely learn a lot um, from the game taking out of that. So, um, yeah, it was it was definitely tough and uh, I, I didn't really want to do me my individual one, but um, <laughs> no, it was, um, yeah, it, it wasn't as bad as it seems. I think we definitely learn a lot from that game. What are they like, those reviews these days? I mean, we all sort of form a, an opinion from the outside. It'd be pretty, you get sort of hit between the eyes and certain bits on the tape are stopped and, and things are addressed. How do they sort of play out in reality? Yeah, well, I think... Um, it's the ones that you don't expect are the hardest ones. So this week we were all expecting it to be, you know, tough and, and probably get copy with a spray, but it wasn't too bad and it was more a lot of learning. Um, but then the ones that we, we think we do all right, that's when the ones that we get a grill in for. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, um, it's, not, it's not too bad. It's, it's a lot of learning. And there's a couple of young blokes in the team that are still learning that, that we know. And then there's some old heads that are helping out as well so it's um it's not too bad when when you look back and you did your review what what was the main thing you identified that went wrong in those last five or six minutes yeah well i think um they uh they started to take the game on a bit more and and, and they had the momentum and it was just about us stopping their momentum and slowing the game down a bit when we tried to probably still play a bit too fast and um and maybe yeah that that type of thing so it was, there was a few little things that probably we could have done to just slow them down a little bit when they're rolling the dice in the last quarter, especially. So, um, yeah, as I said, we'll, we'll take some learnings out of that and then bring them into the back end of the year. Big game against North this week, so we'll try and implement it then. How does someone like Jason Castagna handle this week? I mean, there's been a lot of finger pointing at the, the goal that he had smothered, which effectively probably would have iced the game for you. How's he sort of handled that has been a lot of finger finger pointing at there I'm assuming as a teammate you think that's pretty unfair but sort of how's he handled that yeah well I think I think it definitely is a bit unfair there was definitely it wasn't just one moment that would have iced the game or they probably would have still been rolling the dice they would have got the ball back through the, um, the middle of the ground so there was Jace is a really tough dude he, he doesn't look into that um, quite as much and, and neither do we I think we are you know we back him as a player and we um, back his ability, so I guess um, it, it's obviously you play it over in your head a little bit. There's there's moments in the game that I've been playing over my head where I wish we did a little bit differently. So um, that that moment definitely I don't think defined the game at all. There's there's other there's heaps of moments that um, you know we could have done to to prevent that. As we said off the top, you, you you got drafted to an amazing club that had just won a flag. They went on to win another flag in your first year at the footy club. Who have you worked? really close with you've got so many great mentors down there but has there been a couple that you've worked particularly close with yeah well at the, at the start there was um i was came in as a wingman i guess and i've been working with Candy mcintosh a lot at the start um but now as a backman i've, I've definitely um tried to grasp on the in the likes of nick lawson who's the smartest bloke i've ever played with i reckon and uh dylan grimes is who's one of the toughest um and then also as i said before daniel's been thrown down there this year so been trying to learn with him and he's obviously in in all Australian form. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a few blokes that I'm trying to learn off and, and get better with. Now, every week, Hugo, when the rising star comes through and the name is not Josh Gibkus, we have plenty of Richmond supporters <laughs> pointing out, how the hell has Josh Gibkus not been nominated yet? How can we organise this to be done before the end of the year? Because for a first-year <laughs> player, he has been mightily impressive. Yeah, definitely. I think the the disrespect is towards the the key position players. You know, they're not copping their their twenty touches a week, and they they're just doing everything everything right. So I, you feel bad for Big Joshy Gibbs because he's playing some really good footy. He was sick last week, so I think um yeah, see how he goes this week, and maybe can can get a nomination soon. How much? Uh, well, I guess it'd be on VHS. It was that long ago. How much of your old man's footy have you seen? My memories of your old man. I reckon you had him. I reckon you had him covered for pace. Uh, what have you What have you seen about your old man's footy career? Yeah, he definitely reckons he's got me for pace, and he, no, he, he doesn't. He, he, <laughs> um, no, he's uh, he records everything on Foxtel, and you know, every now and then plays it back to me and, and shows me how good he was. But um, no, he's he's been a he's been a big influence on me. Um, growing up, obviously, he was a he was the coach of my uh, junior footy team, and um, yeah, he's been really really influential on my career. I think. How much do you talk to him about your your footy now? Or, is he, or did you leave it to the, I guess, the series of coaches you've got down there at Punt Road? 
No, yeah, I think um, he, he wants to put his two cents in um, when he can. But uh, no, he's um, he leaves it up to the prof- professionals, I think. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. Um, uh, looks, yeah. yeah. He, he, he always wants to put his two cents in. It uh, looks like you're going to get some good names back this week. Trent Koch and Noah Bolton. The fact that what's happened today at North Melbourne where there's been a change of coach, you're playing them this week. They obviously played some pretty good footy against Collingwood. Does that, that change anything the way you prepare for this game? Are you a bit more on guard given that it's been a bit of a, a controversial week at North Melbourne so far? No, well, I think I think North has been playing some good footy in the last um, couple of weeks. I think they're they're really cracking in. So, and they're obviously going to come out firing this week. So, uh, we'll see we'll see how we go. But we're just going to prepare as we normally do, take it as seriously seriously as we can, and um, yeah, you know, give it our best shot. Just before I let you go, are you pretty close with Noah Anderson? <coughs> Sorry, um, yeah, I, I am. I grew up with Noah a little bit. Our our dads are pretty close mates so when he kicked that goal it was um, a bit of mixed emotions Did you think he'd kick it? I, I, I knew he'd kick it as soon as he got it I knew he was going to line up and slot that in off the boot and I was, I was actually pretty close to it off the boot I thought oh maybe not but uh, no, he, um, he had that one under control I think no, He's got that one over you for a while then unfortunately Hugo yeah. Hey, uh, well done on the season you, you're building so far well done on the uh, nomination thoroughly deserves and uh, good luck against North and for the rest of the season Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Great to talk to Hugo Rell-Smith, a fine young man and doing some good things on the field for the Tigers.